You always got to vet. You always got to vet. Whether you want to hear the vet out, mm. and then that vet may be a fucking assistant coach or a nigga upstairs or somebody that you don't even know, but he a real one. Hey, man, let me holler at you for a second. Mm -hmm. All that shit you... Mm -hmm. And then you be like, man, I don't really want to hear this, but he's saying some real shit. You know, you got to plot, bro. Bro, you know what's crazy? When all that shit, when they was talking that shit, was nobody right there to say nothing. Everybody was with it. We was with it. Then you got beat. Then everybody ran. They didn't want nobody in here. They didn't want to smoke. So, so, so then nobody wants to smoke. So, what? so th th that's the answer here. If ain't nobody gonna say nothing when it's all cool, then when, when, why would somebody say something when it's fucked up? And that's your answer. What's the root of it that you guys think? Do you just think it's society now? Do you think it's just people, social yeah, media? Social media not killed everything. Yeah, I, no, like, I, think, I think everything is a, is a show now. You know what I mean? And it starts down in grassroots where I'm coaching kids and, 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 and you know, you'll lose or, or see a team lose and you'll see a highlight reel from the game. And I'm just like, y'all just lost or we just lost. Like, but that the mindset is always having to put on a show, always having to do something. And I think, and it's hard for us to speak on it because we kind of caught the tail end of it. We took losses more serious. Like now it's just like, okay, fuck, we played a bad game, but I played, well. you know, it's almost like kind of that, I don't even want to call these guys selfish because I don't know them like that, but it comes off as like, I did what I was supposed to do. But then, like you said, when you don't stand on your shit, you know what I mean? Like, I had no issue with what Dylan Brooks was saying, who he was even, I didn't give a fuck he was talking to LeBron like that. Like, that's dope. Like, you have enough courage to talk, but you got to stand on it. Don't just talk when shit is going good, when shit is going bad. And so when then stuff starts going bad, now you don't want to talk to the media. Now you want to say the media is making you a villain and the fans are doing this, this, and that. But just the whole season, you were dancing and bopping and doing and talking, and I poke bears and I don't respect no one and Draymond ain't shit. Stand on that because you're going to get more respect for standing on it and being wrong, but standing on what you do instead of doing some shit and then running from it once the smoke hits, you know? And congratulations, Dylan Brooks. I mean, second team All NBA is no, that, that's dope. No joke, and, and, and he's definitely going to find a home. But to me, I just, and I asked Tick about this with Aiden, do you learn from this shit? You have to learn from it because we all did stuff when we were younger that we're not proud of. Luckily, there wasn't social media. So now all the young, dumb shit you do is for the world to see, and they get this, you paint this picture of who they think you are. So now do you learn from your mistakes? I'm never telling Dylan Brooke to change the way he plays. I'm just saying if this is what you're going to be about, you got to stand on it, bro. you got to stand on it. I'm not telling Jordan Poole is one of the hardest working, most skilled, and I got to see it up close and personal, uh, you know, in practice. Like this dude works his ass off, but then you just see that, you know, obviously we can't speak to the, the dynamic between him and Draymond because we don't really know what that is now, but obviously getting knocked out is going to fuck the dynamic up, but you don't want to hear from Steph. I mean, you got the blueprint in front of you with the Splash Brothers. You know what I mean? You got two of the greatest shooters to ever live. You get to see them every, like, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know if he appreciates how lucky he is to have that on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, this, these are the greats. These guys are going to the Hall of Fame. These are two of the greatest shooters to ever do it, and I get to work with these guys and bump with them and do this and learn from them every day. I don't know if these younger guys are soaking in and appreciating what's going on. And then like we were talking about earlier, we really had those vets that will pull you to the side and check you. Whether, like you said, whether the guy is playing, whether he's not, but it was someone that you, that, that you would respect. Like when he said, he, you said Sam Mitchell was one of your great mm -hmm. vets, right? He wasn't an all-star, no superstar, right. but he earned the respect he of respected. one of the greatest players of all time. You know what I mean? So it doesn't always have to be a superstar pulling you to the side. It could be someone that, that, that just, you respect him because he's about his word. He's about his business. Right. And I had that kind of respect with younger players. I was never the best player and I bounced from team to team, but I led, like when I would lead, I led by I'll run through a wall. Mm. I'll do everything you need to do to win. So when I spoke to these younger players, they'd be like, all right, all right OG, I feel you. And you would see carryover. So, when we talked on our show yesterday, it's just like when we talk about these young players, it's not to disrespect or we're older players trying to shit on these younger players and they're getting like, that's never, that. never our never approach. That. Our approach is if we were in the locker room, we would tell you this to your face in your eyes. Right. Man to man, it would never get to the media. Right. It would be me pulling you to the front. Like, bro, come on, we got to clean that up. You're too important for this team. You can't be doing that. You can't be, you know what I mean? Like there was stuff that someone told us before. So we would tell, but that's why I suddenly like, in Memphis, I guess it's not Steven Adams because they ran through that. I feel like Draymond kind of lost his way as a leader, and I think he gained it back. But I don't know if he'll, he, he'll there's always going to be friction between him. And, and I don't even call it friction. It's just, it, it, it's off. And you can visually see it. Um, but I just think some of these younger players need guidance these days because it's just such a,
a different world we live in. And some guys, once they get their money, it's hard to tell them anything, unfortunately.